So, I just wanted to give a quick summary um, of, of the series so far. Um, so, we've encountered five logics, K, M, B, S4, and S5. And these are the five most famous normal modal logics. Uh, there are many other normal modal logics, but uh, these are the five most important ones. So, um, uh, let's consider K and M. How did we define M? Well, all we did was take K and make the accessibility relation reflexive. Uh, so, in other words, uh, from formulas of the form necessarily A and not possibly A, we can derive A and not A in the same world, uh, in the very same world. That's the only change. Uh, so we can see that there are formulas that are valid in M that are not valid in K. But there are no formulas valid in K that are not valid in M. To, to make that clear, uh, just consider doing an argument in M. Let's say you, you take M, you're doing your, your argument in M. Um, but you simply leave the rules for reflexivity until the very end. So you do everything else first and then do the reflexive rules at the end and whatever else you need to do after that. Uh, well, some arguments will be shown to be invalid before you need to apply the reflexivity rules. And up to that point, the trees will quite obviously be precisely the same as the trees for K. So that kind of consideration shows you that if something is valid in K, it must be valid in M. It's a sort of the same reason as to why anything that's valid in standard propositional logic must be valid in K, because any tree in standard propositional logic, you could just draw a little world around it, and then that would be a, a, an argument in K. Uh, so, the everything that's valid in K is valid in M, but there are arguments valid in M that are not valid in K. So uh, we say that the set of inferences that are valid in K uh, is a proper subset of the set of inferences that are valid in M. And um, the way of sort of uh, phrasing this in shorthand is to say that M is stronger than K or K is weaker than M. And we can represent this relation graphically with an arrow, just like that. That's pretty simple. And this allows us to uh, very easily visualise the relationships between all of these logics. Um, this image here is uh, taken from uh, uh, one in Rod Girl's book, Modal Logics and Philosophy. Um, and it's quite a simple visual representation of uh, how the systems relate to each other. S5 here is the strongest system that we've encountered, and this makes sense. Recall from my uh, video where I introduced uh, these extensions of K that uh, S5 is reflexivity plus symmetry plus transitivity, which uh, correspond to M, B, and S4, respectively. So, as I said, all of these systems are normal modal logics, there are other normal modal logics, um, but I'm probably not going to examine them. Uh, well, maybe in a in a later video, but not for a while. Uh, anyway, K is the weakest normal modal logic. Not just the weakest one that we've examined, it's the weakest one, period. Every other normal modal logic is, um, is an extension of K. Um, now, in the next few videos, we'll examine some non-normal modal logics. Uh, and uh, that's just about all I wanted to talk about here. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.